<clears throat> um, excuse me. Yeah. Hey, what's happening there, fuck faces? Listen, this is the Gun Bag Dad podcast. I'm your host, of Gun Bag Dad, aka the Superficial Missile. If you believe that, believe it. Hey, go on and click like, hit the subscribe button, pop a comment down there. It's all good. Today, I wanted to discuss uh, self defense as a topic for a quick. Uh, five minute podcast, maybe 10 minutes, depends on how long it takes, um, regarding the self-defense and claim of self-defense. Uh, I hear a lot and get a lot of questions about, oh, what would you do in this scenario and that scenario, robbery and da 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 and this and that. And uh, a lot of people have uh, uh, great misconceptions as to what self-defense is. Um, and I don't think they quite understand how it works. So self-defense is considered... Uh, what's called an admission and avoidance plea, right? I'm admitting to the act, but I'm trying to avoid the penalties from that act because there was a legal standard of self-defense that is met. Uh, self-defense requires five elements um, to, I guess, ensure that that is self-defense. Uh, the first being innocence. The second is imminence. The third is proportionality. The fourth is avoidance. And the fifth is reasonableness. Okay, all five of those elements have to be met in order to uh, provide that beyond a reasonable doubt of being self-defense. Uh, and real quick, in a sense, uh, was I the aggressor? Did I start the altercation or confrontation? Yes or no. Uh, eminence, hey, is the threat of great bodily harm and death viable and in the moment? Is it right now? Proportionality. Do I have a AR-15 and they only have a stick uh, or, or no weapon at all? Uh, it's got to be proportional, force on force. Uh, the next is avoidance. Did I have a chance to get away? Could I have gotten away and avoided this whole situation and avoided uh, the potential outcome that what is most likely resulting in someone's death? Uh, that's going to be a great question as well. Uh, and the last one is reasonableness. How, how would a reasonable person have reacted? Would, would a reasonable person have done and taken the same steps that uh, that person who is uh, searching for a self-defense plea um, has? So uh, that's pretty simple. And a lot of times these scenarios that people come to me with and try to explain, they fail one of those five tenets uh, in some way, shape, or form. So, um, you know, protecting strangers, you know, most of the time the law says you can protect yourself. You got a right to protect yourself and loved ones, close family, people, you know, strangers are, don't fall into that category unless there's something like a active shooter where it's a random situation where now we're all strangers are grouped into one big bubble and we're all fighting for our lives together. Um, I think another thing is a lot of questions that I get about, um, not only self-defense is coming to someone's aid or, or a uh, business's aid. Uh, the most questions I get is about robbery. Hey, you're at a gas station, somebody's robbing a gas station. Uh, what are you gonna do? You're gonna shoot them, right? Mm, no, we gotta go back to those five elements and I, I need to make sure and check off those five elements of the list. Once those five elements are checked off and I know that this is it, um, then it's dead city. I'm, I'm dropping something. Uh, and that's just period point blank. That's just how I feel. You got to be logical. Uh, you can't use emotion in those times uh, as well. They can use that against you in the court uh, because once you're in fear, you're in a scared state. It's a state of emotion. Uh, it's, it, it, those are crimes of not passion, but it, it, the emotional state brings in a lot of uh, uh, issues. And you'll, you'll know, find that a lot of people will tell you uh, you'll have to tell someone that you made a, log a logical decision, sorry, uh, and clear and concise, and it had to happen. And there goes my dogs going off. I ought to let them out. Looks like somebody's got their dog pissing in my yard. I ought to let them out on his ass. God dang it. All right, that's enough. Diesel, Duke. Uh, so if you didn't know, those are my dogs, Diesel, Diesel and Duke. Diesel!
chill out. Uh, and they're very protective of the house. So if you ever do find out the address, it's nothing nice waiting on you here, son. Anyway, uh, to get back to it, self-defense, oh. diesel. I'm not going to ask you again. I asked politely the first two times. I, uh, please. Great. Good boys. I tried to prevent that, but that's what you wanted. You asked for it. Anyway, we're back to the podcast. Uh, sorry for the interruption by the dogs. Um, so self-defense. Uh, we get back to gas station or, you know, uh, certain people are asking questions. Oh, what would you do this? What would you do that? And sometimes the answers are exactly what they wanted. And sometimes they're exactly the opposite um, because you really have to be calculated and understand the law and what needs to go on in order for things to happen. Because like I said, you could think that, oh, I did the right thing based on what you saw on the internet or in a movie or what somebody told you you should do. And then you find out one of those five elements doesn't exist and you're on a manslaughter charge. Reckless homicide, whatever it is, <laughs> it's going to be a bad thing. Okay, so uh, please be vigilant and uh, definitely be a critical thinker when it comes to this. If you're going to buy a firearm, uh, I always suggest that people take self-defense classes, hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, learn how to use weapons other than the firearm. The firearm is not the equalizer in a sense. It is, in a, in a way, uh, a smaller female, uh, a giant male, that's a different situation and scenario. Uh, and size does depend on it too. Uh, if I'm, I'm not 5'5", five five, but if I was 5'5 five five and 120 soaking wet against a guy who's 6'8 and 350 pounds, there's a chance that he could hit you with a blow that kills you. So there, there is some things and, uh, and caveats that they take into consideration. Uh, he could have been hopped up on PCP drugs, whatever. Uh, so it's unfortunate because you almost have to be sure that someone has a weapon, uh, and even if they're going for it, cause they pull out a cell phone, um, it, it gets dicey, right? Uh, or they pull out something that's not a weapon and you have a firearm, it gets dicey. Also, um, on that caveat too, when I am actually training or at the range, uh, I normally see a lot of people who are putting the targets out at 15, 20, 30 yards uh, unnecessarily. If they're practicing or if you're practicing for self-defense, there, there's nothing beyond 15 yards you really need to do. And I would say really beyond 10, 7 even um, because you're, you're too far away for someone to be a threat that doesn't have a firearm. Uh, if they have a firearm, million yards, who cares? But if they don't or if they're turned and running, you're in trouble. Um, so... I think that to get back on that is learning how hand-to-hand -hand combat, even blade skills, uh, weapons, edged weapons, um, just so you understand grappling, uh, that you need to put up a fight first before you just draw the gun. Uh, there's a lot of people in prisons around America that thought that that road rage shit and, uh, sorry, road rage uh, shit and just popping out because somebody was, uh, jacking, jacking at the jaw, they can pop a shot. And then they realize later on when they're crying in court getting that sentencing, that's not the correct thing to do, right? You should know that. I did a little camera switch just to fuck with you guys real fast. Um, so hopefully this has been informative. It's been a quick 10 minutes, I think, or something. I, have, I don't have the counter on, but so that you can understand that... Uh, we do want you to be a, a gun owner, but we want you to be responsible. We want you to take care. Uh, we will go over the safety rules of gun ownership in a different uh, episode. And, and, and we'll probably have my man Jared or possibly maybe my man Chuck from Bullseye might join me for a podcast. And we can discuss that as well because he's seen uh, the gambit. And a lot of those guys have seen the gambit of uh, accidents and fuck-ups at the gun range and in other places. A lot of them are ex-police uh, or military that work there. Uh, not a lot, but there are a few. And uh, they can I'll probably have some of them on to tell some stories too. So And to get their opinion, uh, because I think it's valuable that uh, you get opinions from more than one person, and that way you have an amalgamated uh, pool of uh, information that you can derive your truth out of. 
and make sure that everything lines up. Um, hey, that's going to be it for this one. And I hope you guys are having a great day. If you're not, hey, uh, pray a little more, try a little harder, uh, receive a little bit better, right? Listen more than you speak, and uh, you just let me speak. And I'm out.